Bye everyone, this is Miss Malini, and I'm so excited to kick off our Bold Over by Cricket series. Get it, get it, Bold Over. <laughs> and you can send us all your messages with the hashtag MM Fridays. And today I have some extraordinary guests in the house. And starting with my friends and actors. I was going to say fellow actors. I'm like, I'm not an actor. But we have Anshu Manjal, who's also a fabulous <laughs> actor, player and fan, as proven during our MM World episode, which you can see in the links below. Uh, who's here to talk to us about cricket a little bit, and Prabhu Punjabi. He's going to be telling us about his favorite players as well. Now, let me just tell you up front, I don't know a whole lot about cricket. I only thing I know is that it happens every four years, and I get to see my face in a room. It's very exciting. Um, so I thought it would be fun to start a series where we tell you about all the things that you should know about cricket so you don't sound stupid when you hang out with your friends. And you can learn something along the way, and you can do it with a little pizzazz and fashion. So moving on to another window, we have Vikram Sate, who's actually dialed in all the way from Australia. Hi, Vikram. Yeah. How is it going over in Oz? You're so lucky. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. Everybody is now coming into uh, Adelaide as we speak. Uh, there's Bharat Army, there's, ba uh, there's the Bami Army as well here, and there's Swami Army, and then we, I'm part of a group called Blue Republic. I love that, the Blue Republic. That's perfect. So we're going to be coming back to you to ask you what the vibe is like in just a minute. Let's move on to another window where we have Tina Sharma Tiwari and Imran Patel. Yeah. So Tina and I actually went to school together. Like, I'm not going to say how long ago. Yeah, let's not say how long back, okay? Yeah. She's a sports journalist and news anchor on Times Now and the author of the forthcoming novel, Who Me, which promises to be a hilarious take on finding oneself, finding love in the mad, mad world of urban India, which means... You have to give me a copy of that book. <laughs> I, mean, I found some love, but it's always good. <laughs> and Imran Patel, of course, who's an avid sports enthusiast who loves to play cricket, and who I met one day at Aaron told him, please come join my hangout, and he agreed to do this. Um, and he's going to be talking about some of the upcoming games and matches. And we have Lara Shah, who's dialed in from Dubai. Hi, Lara. <laughs> And she's been actually doing fabulous tarot and readings and predictions and was eerily accurate four years yeah. ago about most of the predictions we made on the radio. So we're going to ask her who's winning. And the three very well-behaved and unusually well-behaved trio <laughs> sitting in the room. <laughs> Our team from and Marvin from the fashion team and Mishni with my dance and fitness blogger who are going to be doing a little fun, fabulous lifestyle action. So let's start with um, a little word from you guys. Tell us. Right from scratch, okay, what are the things people need to know for this year, and what are the teams and games you're excited to watch? Well, uh, I am pretty kicked about, uh, means I'll, I'll put my head out and say that I'm looking forward to Australia, South Africa, New Zealand uh, as my firm favorites. Uh, I, my heart says India, <laughs> but uh, I would, uh, it'll be hard because we've not been playing at our best. <laughs> I'm keeping my fingers crossed and I hope we turn the tide. Um, the last time the World Cup happened in Australia was about uh, uh, 23 years ago, so it's been a really long time. Uh, we didn't do well back then too. <laughs> uh, but this time things have changed, the pitches are not the same. I feel Vikram would be the best person to talk about it because he's right there. But uh, as an avid watcher, having followed cricket, I can pretty much make out that the teams with the best bowling attacks are going to be doing very well this year and therefore South Africa, New Zealand, and Australia are my first picks, and England, India, and Pakistan, the fourth, for the four semi-finals. Oh, wow. Someone's going to beat you up for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, none, none of us, but Prabhu Punjabi, tell us a little bit about who should we be supporting if we are, because I'm going to support India, because I don't really know anybody. You're supporting India. Support India. If you want to be on my side, yeah. and you want to support the team that I'm supporting, like, deep down, I really want South Africa to win Ooh. this World Cup. Like, I'm like, for a change, I want to see somebody new win the cup. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I think they deserved it like more than anyone else in the past as well. But they've had like really, really unlucky and bad semi final, yeah. especially against Australia. Oh, so I want like a South Africa Australia semi final and I hope that happens. Like India is all heart, yeah. but they've been playing you know, like they haven't been playing something that they haven't been playing a game that can make you win a World Cup in Australia. Yeah. Right. So if that happens through the tournament, great. If that doesn't happen, South Africa. Like the way they're bowling right now, Vikram and me could bat against them. <laughs> well, I've seen you bat. You're pretty good. Let's go over to Tina and Imran because I saw Tina nodding over there. What is your uh, prediction on this and what do you think, Tina? 
right molly when he said that the heart says india but the head cannot it just can't unfortunately the last two months for india and australia have been abysmal they haven't won a match in over two months which includes test series and tri series and you know so india is really in shambles right now honestly we'd all love to see india bring the cup back home but the truth is it's not going to happen we don't have the bowling for it to happen that's the truth so let's uh, let's support india all the way through to the quarter finals after that i'm not so sure yeah Oh wow! All right. Well, we're going to take your word for that. And Imran, tell us a little bit about. I know you were talking about some of uh, the passion that you have for sports here, and you're doing some really cool stuff. So I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah. So um, currently, we're working on a startup to make sports more a place where every child and adult can play alike. We don't have any meadans left where people can go play in a safe environment. We're looking at making sports pages around India, where every neighborhood will have a place where kids can play in the mornings. Adults at the age of 35 and 40 want to call their 10 friends and just go play cricket. That sounds like a lot of fun. So, yeah. 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 Yeah
is it going to be a south africa australia semi final repeat is that possible can you give us your expertise over there and also will india get knocked out by the group stage <laughs> so you're looking at south <laughs> <laughs> so, what what is the first question? Uh, will Will there be a South Africa Australia semi final? South Africa Australia. Yeah. There could be one more emerging challenge for both of them. Okay. See, the thing is that Africa, is that a possibility? Group stage. I mean, the way they've been lined up is the South Africa Australia semi final a possibility if we uh, if we qualify, or will they bump into each other in the quarterfinals? By the I think they will. There seems to be a challenge, so there may be um, th there will be three people, and it will be very diff they'll be very close to each other. That's how it shows. Awesome. Let's go over to Tina and Imran for a second. So yeah. I want to back it up for all the people who are, you know, finally getting into the groove of cricket. It may not be people who watch, you know, test matches and really get into it when it's the World Cup, right? So what are a couple of things that you think people really should know that are really going to be key influencers in the results for this World Cup? Anything that really stands out? You want to start? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Actually, this is the first World Cup, now since the last one, where the rules have changed slightly. Instead of having five fielders outside, we're now only allowed four fielders outside. There's the new ball at both arms. And now there are two batting power plays instead of three like they used to be. So I just feel the spinners are going to get plonked everywhere. Unless you're really good, it's going to be very difficult with four fielders outside. Yeah, and you know, just taking off from that actually, and we touched upon it earlier. The thing is, a lot of people say we don't want to give the cup back. But there's a huge difference between the World Cup being played on subcontinental tracks yeah. and being played in Australia and New Zealand because it's, it's virtually a different game. It becomes a bowler's game and you can have the best batting lineup in the world, but if you don't have the bowling strength, you're not going to be able to do well, which is why I think one of the boys earlier started with whoever has the best pace bowling attack is the thing that's going to be far. And um, which is why I, you know, I'm not very confident about India. I'd love to see India go further, but I do have a question for Lara. Um, Lara, is there a chance or a likelihood of India meeting Australia in the quarterfinal stage? Because if that happens, then that's it. That's where we finish. So I want to know if that's going to happen. That's a good question. I, I feel India will emerge at some point. Um, they are showing strength uh, on the chart. Yay. Yes. Okay, that's good to yes. know. <laughs> now, I have a question in from Suhail who's just tweeted in, and I'm going to throw this open to everyone. What team has the best overall composition? Anyone want to take that? Australia. Australia? I think Australia? Uh, I would beg to differ. I think uh, South Africa on paper have the best composition because. Uh, I agree. I agree with you on that. I think it's South Africa. Yeah. South Africa, but uh, going by the record, and I hope they change it, I just feel this time, uh, again, because they end up, I hate to use the word for them, but they do end up choking. At very opportune moments. Uh, this time, I hope they don't do that because they've got Divilliers, they've got players who've not had a shadow of the history. I mean, they've not been part of teams where they've made blunders. So that really plays on your mind. Uh, going back to Lara, I really uh, uh, think we do not have the best batting lineup in the world, uh, or even amongst the top three. And this is something I'd like to ask Vikram because he's there. Uh, who do you think has the best? Batting lineup. I know we are not good at bowling, but in terms of batting, everyone keeps talking about how good we are. The fact is, we are not even amongst the top three, I feel, on current form. On talent, yes, but not on form. I'd like to know who you think would last. What do you think, Vikram? Oh, oh, so I just heard uh, the part of the question when you said who, uh, who has the best batting lineup. So I'm just uh, replying to that. Uh, I think relative why Australia has emerged. We never thought the new Australian side would actually uh, emerge so well. But the fact that Steve Smith is leading from the front and then David Warner is in outstanding form. Uh, but I'm very uh, optimistic about New Zealand because I've never seen Brendan McCullum bat so well. Kane Williamson batting extremely well. There is uh, a lot of depth into the batting lineup of New Zealand. I'm having a I'm a good feeling that New Zealand will play amazingly well in this World Cup. Having said that, I think South Africa has come to a point where they deserve to win the World Cup. And uh, uh, as somebody said, there is no 
fan surface again just share to south the time and mind that bowl beautifully on these also uh, extract a lot of back of the length bounce so i have a good feeling about south africa and new zealand india's batting lineup is amazing there is no doubt about it the only problem i have is that every time you have to outbat the opposition and that is going to be a uh, problem point every time if you have to score 325 runs it's going to be very difficult but uh, finally you need to score them on three important days and i think india needs to just focus on those three important games but otherwise it will be a tough one and there's another question in and this one's from saket who wants to know without sachin tendulkar do you reckon india pakistan that whole game like steam is it's going to still be no. on sunday we're all watching together but no. i think it's still exciting yeah i think it's still exciting i think there's a there's a new ad also out yeah. <laughs> which just shows this uh, yeah. pakistani man just waiting to watch that guys and it just goes to show that six consecutive world cups we played them and we beat them in the world cup right so where it matters we never sort of bow down to them you know yeah. that the world cup would be shit five times five times <laughs> I like the confidence. And uh, I'd like to answer this part of the question. I mean this comment. Yes. Uh I I was at the lobby at the Intercon just now and it is amazing the number of people uh who come and talk to me about why if you can just tell Sachin to just come here and be with the team. <laughs> and uh, that is very very important because i was wearing this cap given to me by sachin and my, my, i'm launching my book how sachin destroyed my life tomorrow in adelaide and uh, the guy came to me and said that you know just tell him to be here that is the most important and currently by the way guys adelaide is looking like goregaon there are more indians than you can see ever in the history of mankind and uh, you would not believe that Uh, I the population of Adelaide is lesser than the population, but it's electric atmosphere. But yeah, it sounds like it's amazing over there. And actually, talking about how people are very superstitious, Imran and I were talking about this earlier. Imran, you had some great examples of you know cricket superstitions. Can you tell us a few that you were telling me earlier that uh, people follow? Like, as I know, like there's some friends of mine who won't let somebody else go to the bathroom until somebody's batting or bowling is over because they're that superstitious. What are the ones you've heard of? Oh, the funniest one I've heard of actually is Neil McKenzie. He tapes and used to put his bat to the ceiling before games. It actually started off with his teammates as a prank, taping his bat to the ceiling. He took he took it off and he actually scored a hundred. And then since then he started taping his bat to the ceiling. Tapes it to the ceiling. That's amazing. It's <laughs> <laughs> really hard to play. <laughs> Sorry. Was um, another one as well. Who back in '93 when he was on 60, he uses red. And he used to wipe to wipe off the sweat, and then he kept it in his pocket throughout because he's got a hundred after doing that. And then throughout his career, he had this red handkerchief with him. And Lara, actually, here's a good question for you. What are some things that India fans can do, even though it sounds like from everyone's predictions that we're not really going to make it very far? But what is there something that all India fans can do while watching India Pakistan to help them win? I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I I I personally feel that uh, whenever there is um mass energy given it works like if there is um an event in the world which is very destructive and everyone's talking about it it gets more destructive right similarly if everyone just really wills or wishes or has an intent that india does well and it will that kind of a vibe will pass on to them and somehow i have a feeling they will emerge something in them will wake up wow well fingers crossed for that okay we're going to do a round of questions where since i don't really know the questions to ask i'm going to ask each of you to ask each other a question but mm-hmm. well, let's go over to my fashion team really quick who are sitting there trying very desperately to understand <laughs> what we're talking about anushka and mar pop quiz what have you understood so far about cricket <laughs> that oh. adelaide is now going up that's Is it? Mar, have you noticed my sleeve? It's no more. I, I, I love it. It's golden. <laughs> oh, I'm just a little shy. So in case you guys are watching, by the way, all of Team Ismani will be watching India Pakistan play together, and you're welcome to come and join us at Tertulia on Sunday from 9 a.m. There's a special buy one get one free on drinks. Make sure you wear wear blue, or we will be painting your face blue. Um, Anushka and Mar, you guys look amazing. Tell me about this look a little bit. So we decided to dress up for our brunch on Sunday, and this is what we're going to be wearing. And if you have a brunch to go to during the matches, which you probably will because they're all at like nine a.m. I think. So yeah, and if and if you don't, why aren't you brunching? 
And uh, since most of us, uh, I can wear shorts at work. A lot of us can't wear shorts at work. So brunching is the perfect time for you to come out in shorts. And but so, and I found this really cool shirt in a light blue, which is really blue. But you guys can't see, but it has little tiny like balls. <laughs> See what they are. That's amazing. All right. Excellent. Excellent. For the balls, I felt like putting in the least effort possible. So I come out in my white pajamas and a blue tank because that's the easiest that it can get at 9 a.m. in the morning. Or something that you don't really want to watch but you still want to be fashionable. And <laughs> since we want to show our support, this is what we suggest. Yes. Shall we? We should. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Okay, no, we're not no. doing it. Hold it. I'll tell you what. We're going to be doing that at the end with the dance performances. I guess. Fine. We see. I want you to ask. I want all three of you, since you are the three most uh, sporty people I've met in my life, I would like you to ask anyone on our panel a question. A question? Yes. A question that you would like to ask them related to the sport of cricket during the World Cup. Anything you'd like to know. Generally. Could be who the cute players are, something you know, I don't know. I genuinely, like, uh, at the risk of sounding really stupid, but I'm not ashamed of sounding. I really thought that these, the World Cup was every year. No. So I want to know if this is like recently or has it. Always every year. Listen, don't laugh at me. I know this question. Why is it every four years and not every year? Mark 75, 79, 83, 87, 91, 92, 96, 99. That was the only year that happened after three years. 2004. Yeah, you're right in the sense that now there's a T20 World Cup which happens every two years. There's a Champions Trophy which happens. So it's kind of become a yearly event. Something to me of that. Okay, okay. I'm going to ask you that question. Let's just go over to Tina. One second, we'll just put your mic on. Can you say that again, Tina? A lot of people get confused. I have so many friends, Marv, who ask me the same question. And it's because you have the T20 World Cup happening every two years as well. And it happens on the years when the, the main uh, one-day international World Cup is not happening. Right. So it almost feels like there's a World Cup every year, but it's a different edition and a different format of the game. But that's, yeah, so you get the same thing almost every year. All right, well, I'm just going to take a moment to find out who Ratan is, because Ratan has joined our Hangout. Let's say hi. Hi, Ratan. Hi. Hello, what's up? Hi, do you have a question for anyone? Yes, I have a question for Tina. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. What's your All question? All right. My, my question is that uh, why aren't we playing, why aren't we carrying Robin Uttapa? Wouldn't he be a great addition to the squad? And uh, if something happens to Dhoni, like his fitness is questioned, Absolutely. if something does happen, that happens to him is Dhoni, wouldn't yeah. he be a great choice as a keeper? And he's a great opening bat as well. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. I think that was one of the most uh, contentious decisions when the World Cup squad was actually announced because Robin Uthapa was very much in condition, uh, contention and uh, the ones who were chosen over him were perhaps, uh, you know, Raidu and uh, Stuart Binney. And uh, the, the, the logic that was given by the selectors about Stuart Binney's selection um, over somebody like a Robin Uthapa was that he's going to be very useful on the Kiwi tracks. But the honest truth is that we're playing perhaps two games in total in New Zealand. And I, if I'm not mistaken, there are games like, you know, the ones against UAE yeah. and Zimbabwe. Yeah, so we could be fine without Stuart Binney also. I mean, no disrespect to Stuart Binney. But Robin Uthapa would have been definitely a better choice for the squad because there has been a question mark over Dhoni's fitness. And that's the guy you want keeping, you know, behind the wicket if Dhoni is not able to make it on a particular match day. So, yeah, great question, though. I would also be looking at Naman Oja as well for the opening slot. Was one person who's also overlooked after doing so well in Australia playing for India. But uh, Tina, I would like to uh, ask you something. Yeah. In the beginning, that uh, of course Uttapa is in hot form right now, so I wonder why he's not there. What about Murli Vijay? He scored tons of runs before the tri series in the uh, in the, the test, matches. test matches, and he's a specialist. He's a specialist T20 one day player when we are playing in India. And given the form he was in Australia, wouldn't yeah. it have cricketing logic? to have kept him back as a standby opener considering Dhawan was terribly out of form. 
And he still is, yeah. You know, um, but we, we actually spoke to some of the selectors off the record um, immediately after the selection meeting. And the logic that was given is that he's in fine nick, but it, in the test format of the game, which, you know, it didn't cut ice with all of us reporters, to be honest, because if you're in good form, you're in good form. I know there's a difference and there's a different approach to test cricket and a different approach to one-day cricket. But if you're basically striking the ball well, you will do it in any format of the game. And I, I again, I feel Murli Vijay is somebody who should have been in this one. And I'm talking history. Lakshman scored well in 1999 in Sydney in the last test match, based on which they kept him back for the tri-series. So, yeah. uh, you would apply the same logic for a big tournament like this, especially when your openers are in terrible form, to be fair. Now, Rohit has hit some form, but we are quite uh, loose-ended there. So I'm going to go over to Lara for this, actually. Lara, do you Vikram have a, a... Oh, actually, Vikram, sorry. Vikram, you had a comment to make on that. I'm just going to put on your microphone. Currently, the way Indian bowling is, we don't need a wicketkeeper. The first slip can do the job. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and, and jokes apart, uh, you know, it is... Everybody out here is discussing the same Indian bowling problem. And uh, every now and then, uh, you meet somebody in the lobby. Umesh Yadav comes and I've seen players actually going up to him and say, Kaise bhi karke do wicket le lo, yaar. <laughs> There's actually a message in from Nikhil Chanappa. When we said our cricket experts feel this World Cup will belong to the team with the best bowling attack, he says, Miss Malini, we're so screwed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go back over to Lara. Lara, any uh, thoughts on this and any predictions on which players you think might shine or any general predictions on uh, the matches to come? Especially the India-Pakistan. I know a lot of people want to know about that one. On <laughs> Virat, I want to Sorry? How will Virat Kohli fare at this World Cup? Virat will uh, strategize very well. Um, his his uh, smartness will help. Wow. Will he score runs? Will he score runs? Main question. Um, Overall, if uh, I, I don't know if if you'll take uh, each player's name, I can tell you probably how they'll perform each one one by one. Want to do a few? Sure. Uh, Kane Williamson, New Zealand. Uh, I, we'll do India first, yeah. <laughs> Shikhar Dhawan. Uh, okay, not too good. No, no, Rohit Sharma. Yeah. Rohit Sharma. He, he, he'll have to work on his form. He's in, he's in, he's in a long time. He's, oh, yeah. he's in pretty good nick. He scored two hundreds in the last two games he's played. So, so we're going to come back really quickly to, I know Mishti's been wanting to ask a question. So Mishti, go ahead and ask your question. You can choose whoever you want to ask. Uh, and then, of course, we'll be doing a, a little fun cheer everyone can learn. Go ahead. Can I just say something first? <laughs> yes. We all started talking about Uttapa. We have had a full discussion about South Indian food. About so South Indian food. Okay, no, I was gonna ask. So who's a player that we should keep a lookout for? Like a fresh face. A new player. Any new players? I would. I would look at a couple who've not played World Cups. So one of them is Quinton Dickock. Yeah. Because he's a South African, he's played on pitches like that, and he's won. According to me, he's going to be the best batsman in the world very soon. Just on pure talent, uh, if he stays fit. But I think one one person who's going to definitely uh, rise above all, I hope he does, is uh, Steve Smith. He may not be captaining Australia for the World Cup side, yeah, but uh, he's this batsman who, you know, as commentators say, he looks like an extremely busy player. Yeah. And more than just being a busy player, he can whack off any ball. Like he's almost becoming the Australian equivalent of what Kohli was two years ago. Oh wow! So he's gonna like really shine at this stage because it's his big round as well. So yeah. So but my heart says Sharma. I have a feeling he's going to do something very special. Rohit Sharma. This is going to be his World Cup. I have a feeling. Whether or not India so. goes. Now we know who to cheer for on Sunday. But we're gonna go around now and have each one of you ask another person on the panel a question. Since you'd be best equipped, Prabhu, why don't we start with you? Who would you like to ask, and what's the question? Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Vikram first. Yeah. Uh, Vikram, who do you think yeah. is uh, you know, like, and gonna score the maximum runs in the tournament, yeah, considering the era of Tendulkar is over, yeah. and uh, Kohli's just hit a rough patch, and uh, who's gonna be uh, the highest wicket taker? And the third part of the question is, who's gonna be the sort of the surprise factor of the World Cup? One player who sort of just comes in from nowhere and does something special. 
uh you know very uh, difficult these are like predictions for the astrologer and the tarot card <laughs> but generally i have a generally i have a feel feeling that from uh, Warn, uh from australia's point of view it's going to be david warner i think david warner knows these pitches too well and he is batting so beautifully if you can get him out in the first uh, five or six overs australia will be in deep trouble because i believe that the warner factor will is is very important for smith also to uh, you know uh, to get into good form and especially in the first 15 overs and i am having a good feeling for kane williamson somehow i i feel that kane williamson's got something special for new zealand uh, therefore i believe that he he might be that um, x factor in new zealand i i agree with uh, anshuman when he says quinton de kock i i think uh, he's again a very solid player very aggressive player in both forms of the game uh bowling is something which i actually have not been able to figure out because what i'm seeing in australia like right now are pure pata wickets so the, <laughs> any, any bowler can actually on his day get wickets uh, having said that people who can bowl good uh, back of the land deliveries especially in brisbane and stuff like that fast bowlers will come into play but i this is probably the first world cup that i'm not happy with any spinner in any squad and somehow uh, the, the times of the warnies and the murli dharans and the, the, all the liking any spinner ashwin's not in form support and and they do bowler stuff in the world cup awesome all right let's go over to i think uh, ratan has a question as well so ratan let's uh, who would you like to ask a question to i like i like to ask a question to anushka first and then to tina it's the same question for both uh mohammad hafeez is not playing uh the world cup how much will that impact pakistan because misbah is pretty much the lone backbone for pakistan they being a unpredictable team what do you think will how the chances will affect them are you sure you want anushka or lara do you want to ask for a prediction no i want to ask a prediction i know pretty much right. uh, pakistan is unpredictable so there's no use predicting them man Okay, so I'm um, I'm not sure who you wanted to ask. Sorry, did you want to ask Anushka this question? Yeah, Anushka first, and then Tina. I want both of them to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Anushka, over to you. How would you answer this question? Just see this. Why don't you Why don't you tell us Tell us Anushka. from your fashion expertise? <laughs> I think I'm going to give it to Tina because I don't think Anushka knows what the question is. All right. Um, if you allow me, I I'll be happy to take that. um i yes you know the thing is misba uh, he i don't think he's their lone backbone first of all because you still have a shahid afridi in the mix and the thing with shahid afridi is that you know if you follow cricket on any given day he can single handedly tear the opposition apart and yes it's it's you know it's not as solid a team as pakistan has been in the past but the honest truth is they've always been an unpredictable side and you could never have ever you can't ever go back in history and say pakistan were favorites for this tournament or that tournament they've always looked a bit of a motley crew of you know these odd balls but they come together on certain days and on certain days you know it's it's that crucial game which takes them forward to the semi finals or the finals um i i do think pakistan is a serious danger and i think along with maybe sri lanka they are perhaps two of the biggest dark horses in this tournament Oh. Yeah, sure. Over to Anshuman with the question. Uh, this is for Vikram and Tina both. Uh, given that we have a lack of uh, bowling choices, uh, and I know this is being discussed around triggering circles, does it make sense for India to actually <coughs> open the bowling with Ravinder Jadeja, like New Zealand did back in 1992 with uh, Patel, uh, considering that the pitches, as Vikram said, are complete patta wicket? So uh, instead of Wayward fast bowlers. Would you suggest as a surprise pick to open India's bowling with a left-arm spinner or an Ashwin who's done it in T20 in IPL? All right, let's uh, take. Yeah. Yeah. You go ahead. Go ahead. It's it's for me. Both yeah. of you. Yeah. Both of you. Well, let Tina take it first since because. Okay. Okay. Fine. So um, you know, I think obviously Dhoni is the you know he's the king of surprises. and i think uh, it's really going to depend on the conditions i honestly i'm really sorry to say this here but i don't know what is a patta wicket but i'm assuming it means a dead track <laughs> so it's really we just bit on the you know just okay. Okay. okay fine so um i i think in 90% of the games you are going to see two quicks or medium pacers um open the game but i think perhaps against a side which is a little suspect against spin 
um, I think you could actually see, um, you know, Dhoni playing that card, but it's not going to happen very often. Maybe in one or two games at the most. All right, and Vikram, do you want to take that as well? Scam runs. Vikram, can you hear us? Can you put his uh, audio on? Let's see if we can hear him. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Vikram. On, on tracks like Sydney and Adelaide where it is completely pata, pata basically means that there is no wicket. You are playing on surfaces which uh, are generally like, like uh, you, anybody can play that kind of a wicket. Uh, those surfaces he might try something different but Brisbane where the ball still will uh, uh, seam up a little bit in the initial 5 or 6 overs. That time he may not play but uh, no, as, as uh, you know said that MS has some tricks uh, up his sleeve and I will not be surprised he tries Rohit Sharma also in the first five overs, it, uh, it won't matter. And um, yes, you, she mentioned about Afridi. I just saw him uh, in the lobby. He is uh, as young as you can get, and I believe he is celebrating the 20th, 20th anniversary of his 18th birthday today. <laughs> Amazing. Vikram, do you have a question from anyone or anyone on the panel? Uh, sorry, I lost you. I lost that line. Yeah? Do you have a question for anyone? Yeah. Uh, my question is for Anshuman, who seems to be the most uh, well read on this World Cup. Uh, do you, uh, why don't you rate Kumar Sangakara and the Sri Lankans in the side? Why, what do you think is Sri Lanka's future? Vikram, I have been following uh, the Sri Lanka New Zealand series which happened uh, in the last 45 days and given the form Sri Lanka is in, I would uh, not rate them very highly. Uh, they are a very good team. They are the underdogs as Tina said because of the quality of talent they possess. But given current form and the kind of bowling they have, I know they have a balanced bowling attack, but as we've all discussed that the best bowling team will stand the best chance. Uh, I do not see them going all the way. I mean, two good games and we might see them in the semis, yes. But uh, I would be surprised if they end up beating a South Africa or an Australia or even a New Zealand. Uh, and like then, uh, just a small question to Anushka. What do you think is the future of the decision review system? <laughs> I would have liked to see how she reacted. Marvin, Marvin, just saw Shahid Afridi in the lobby of the hotel. Is anything you want him to tell him the next time he sees him? To say hey. Okay, Vikram, please note, please say hey the next time. You see him? Um, all right. Uh, do Anushka, do you have a question for anyone? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. Let's move on to Imran. Imran, I'm sure you have a question for someone on the panel. Let's go over to you. Um, actually, yeah. Uh, speaking about spinners, we were talking. You guys were talking about a few, but um, what about Yasir Shah, Pakistan, and Senen Ik for Sri Lanka? Um, anyone free to take the question? Who would like to take that? If you want to raise your hand, so I can see. Hey, you know, uh, Yasir Shah, Shah, the leg spinner, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I haven't seen much of him. Not seen, not seen much of him. Oh, Apparently, yeah. in domestic, they rate him a uh, little bit. But honestly, I've not seen him, uh, seen much of him. Hopefully, in uh, in Adelaide, he won't do well. That's what my wish is. Yasir, yeah. yeah, he's very. Uh, again, it's the pitches. I don't think he's going to. Even though, thank God, there is a leg spinner in the tournament because none of the other team seems to be carrying one. Uh, well said. Yeah. Let's hope that he does something against all the other teams except India. All right, Lara. Yeah. One last. But I think Imran Tahir will be the leg spinner, right, for South Africa? Yes. yes. I'm yes. Shahid Can I get a question from Tina? Go ahead. Yeah, Tina, go ahead with your question. I think they're on a slight lag with yeah, us. Yeah. Tina, can you hear us? I disagree with that, but let's not go into that. Um, Lara, I have a question for you with some specific names. It would be fun to watch who's going to hit the maximum number of sixes in this tournament. Um, let me just, you know, give you two or three names and maybe among these guys you can tell us. Um, Chris Gale has to be there. Um, everyone's been talking about Kane Williamson, so I'm going to put his name in there. Virat Kohli, for sure, and um, A.B. de Villiers. David Warner. And David Warner. Okay, so we've got five names. All right. Super, Lara, can you do some predictions for us on those names? Yeah, the first name that you took looks very uh, prospective and good. Chris Gale. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, Virat Kohli as well. Okay. Uh, these two will do uh, very well. The rest are, I mean, as expected. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know that. 
What about David Warner? I'd like to David know. Because I think he's right on top of the <coughs> six inning. And Australian grounds are not small. Uh, there can be some disturbances for him which uh, could affect his performance, but he will, he, will, um, the time. he will perform as expected, but nothing really over the top. Yeah, David yeah. Warner has too many yeah. extracurricular activities going on to be really concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I read today he went to a psychologist to solve this problem, so I believe he got everything under control. All right, so one last word from all you guys for my fashion and my fitness and all the girls who are watching and the boys who are watching who want to know who the cute players are. Anyone that we should be supporting on Sunday, based on cuteness alone. On, on Sunday, <laughs> yeah. uh, I would start with tomorrow because the first two games are tomorrow. Yes, yes. Uh, and I think... Uh, <laughs> Uh, cuteness. I think some of the Australian <laughs> wives are really sweet. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. In fact, we're going to be coming up with a blog on the first wives clubs of cricket, uh, a first first wives club of cricket, very soon. We're going to go over to Mishti now since we're almost out of time. But thank you guys so much for being part of this hangout. I think I've learned so much. Like overdose, Anushka is now a cricket genius, basically. <laughs> um, so let's go over to you guys. Mishti, take it away. Tell us what you're teaching us, and hopefully everybody at home is going to learn along with you. Awesome. Did Did we want to do it with the fake paint or no fake paint? Yeah, I think yeah, maybe go do it with the face paint. Come on, fashion team, let's make it up. This is what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fun part. Literally, just get into it, fingers and all. Yeah. Feel free to do this at home. Yay! <laughs> Super easy to do. Anyone can do it. Minus tie and die. Wow. <laughs> tie and die. <laughs> All right, so Mishi's going to teach you a little party here, so you can do something aside from Sachin, Sachin, <laughs> the next time you're at a match. Yeah, exactly. So this is more of a dance, but hey, it's like a pump-up kind of dance just before the match, which you can do yeah. with your friends, or if you want, you can do it alone, either way. But um, we're going to do it to India Valley. I'm sure all of you have heard that song from Happy New Year. So we're going to teach you a big Bollywoody song. I love my Bollywood. When it comes to dance. <laughs> so we'll get started. So Marva and Mishka are going to help me out with the choreography. Yay! <laughs> we're starting off at the back, facing back, and you're just going to point to your blue secondary. Like, yeah. And right hand first, you're going to go point, 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 point. So the words are actually say hey, home go. Na, 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 na. Excuse my very bad Hindi. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Keep going. So point, point, point. Point. And then you're going to turn around this way, and you're going to do towards your heart, 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 heart. Okay, so it's get there, I'm going to get it, na, 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 na. Cool. Yes, perfect. <laughs> so you're doing point, 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 heart, heart, heart. <laughs> All right. There. Um. Fingers, fingers, very easy. You're just doing a circle, 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 and again, heart, 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 heart. So every India only you do heart, 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 heart. That's your base step or okay. course. Cool. Yeah. So straight after the after you've turned around, you're doing heart, 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 circle, circle, heart, 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 heart. From there, you're just doing like a boppy step. You're doing like a cross with your hands. So it's a cross out, cross wow. out. Yeah. <laughs> I love one more. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, and, and your legs are just sort of tapping along. Okay, so you're doing a cross out, cross out. Really fun, really fun. Okay, and really like get into it. It's really like, yeah, no, okay. okay, so one more time from the top. We'll just do it. Music? Can I do the cool voice? Actually, let's do it to music, yeah. Music? <laughs> <laughs> Bollywood you do know I've done this, my super man. You're doing a muscle, and then you're doing a flat, and cricket back. Yeah. Yeah. I like this one. You're muscle doing, and yeah. flat, muscle, and cricket back. 
cricket ball and then style from that style and again yeah vale finish that's it okay this is <laughs> we'll do it twice from the top <laughs> tutorial for you guys to watch step by step and learn and do it all your time. Yay. Thank you so much. I think that was really fantastic. That was so much fun to watch and this has been such a fun hangout. Thank you all for being part of the hangout. One last word from each of you on the matches to follow and things that you're looking forward to. Just have fun and cheer for India and do that dance step. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. It was a good cricket in Australia for yeah. a change. So yeah. And Vikram, who is in Australia right now, a word from you on the vibe and what we're looking for. You're looking forward to. As Ravi Shastri would say, it's important that at the end of the day, cricket wins. It does not matter what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, Ratan, since you've joined us so kindly, why don't you say the last word? Something you're looking forward to. I think Ratan is frozen for the moment. Let's go over to Lara. A last word. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Dubai. A last word of luck to the teams. Do you have a word of luck or any last word on the games? I can't hear you, sorry. Any last words on the matches to follow? Oh, or... uh, Dhoni, Dhoni is going to surprise everyone. All right, that's what we like to hear. All right, let's go over to Imran and Tina. Uh, Imran, a last word from you? Have faith in those who well and keep the South Africa in the Vikram said that so if we keep that in spirit, I'd love to see the South Africa final. I think it will be the best that we've seen in a very long time. Awesome. And thank you so much, fashion and dance and fitness team. You guys were amazing. Looking forward to all of us watching together on Sunday. Thank you all. Hang on, it's already on you. Follow any dot com. Fridays, you can tell yourself when you're telling us what your favorite part your favorite part.